Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today for Watercolor Wednesday, we're gonna paint this loose um, painting of a water lily. I did several water lilies on vacation, live, like right from the um, right from the pond. And this was the one I liked the most. It was the one I did last, and I thought this would be a really fun tutorial to do today. We're gonna start with, um, I'm just gonna set my sketch in front of me so I can see it. And um, I'm just using my little travel watercolor palette, my portable painter, which had a little accident when we were out. The dog kind of jumped down on it when it was set up, but I used some industrial adhesive to glue the tabs back down. I think it's fine. So that takes a licking and keeps on ticking, as they say. We're gonna use a number 12 round, which is what I, I did use that size, but in a travel brush when I was painting on location. And two jars of water, one for cleaning your brush, one for getting fresh water in. And we're gonna start off by, uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a quinacridone rose color, any sort of pink, and you're gonna add quite a bit of water to that. And we're also gonna get a little bit of cobalt teal. I just have a little slice of a Daniel Smith cobalt teal watercolor stick there I'm using. And I wanna keep this super, super light to begin with. All right, we can always add more color in as we go. So I'm gonna start off by the flower here. And actually, why don't we grab also um, a little bit stronger. Let's start with stronger concentrations first and we can work, um, we can work on the lower petals. I think it'll be a little bit easier to do it that way. A little bit stronger pink and we'll mix that together get a more of a purpley color all right we're going to start with that the brush is pretty well loaded i'm working on a, just a scrap of um i think this is a fabriano artistico here and i'm going to start just by putting in some of the darker petals here grab some more of the pink Now, if you like this loose style of painting, I have a watercolor flower workshop that does a lot of the looser style. And turn my paper, get these bottom petals. As we work out here, we're gonna want a little bit more of the blue. Cobalt teal can be a pretty easy color to um, to temper. The reason I'm pulling it in like this is so that I can have um, the, the tip of my brush making the point of the petal. Can add in a little bit more there. Kind of tip that, let those colors run together a little bit. And then I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna grab some of the pinker color and I'm gonna start working up here. My brush is very, very watery. And remember, this: the wetter your paint is, the more you're gonna have um, shifting from light to dark and I have a variety of brands in this portable painter. I have some I have some core, I have some Daniel Smith, I have some M Graham. If you have any weird shapes you can go ahead and refine them a bit. I think I also want to get a little bit of ultramarine blue in there. I love that granulation I get from ultramarine. And cobalt teal is pretty granulating as well. And I'm going to do some of that up here. And maybe a little bit more of the teal. And this is a very intuitive process. You're just kind of letting those colors do their thing. Now I want some yellow in the center and I love it when my colors kind of blend together. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to do some of this Gamboge. Water it down a little bit. And I want to leave a little gap between the colors in the front and the colors the yellow so that I won't get it to it won't blend in with the colors 
in front, but it will blend in a bit with the other ones. I'm going to get a little fresh yellow because I feel like that mixed out a little bit. Going for a really loose, colorful effect. All right, now we're gonna let that dry, unless you know you want some wet into wet blending with more colors. If I want a little bit more like darker pink in there, what I would do is grab the color from the pan and just like kind of throw it in where I want that little bit of edge. Just be careful not to touch it into an adjacent color if I don't want the blending. If I want a darker purple anywhere, I can take the ultramarine blue in the in the uh, rose and I can get a darker area there. I've got a little too much blending happening there. It's getting a little muddy so what I'm going to do is just go in there with a dry brush and just kind of soak up some of that. And any place, if you do want any little highlights, you can go in there with a dry brush and lift off some. Alright, we can add some details to that after it dries up a little bit. I'm going to do the lily pad now. I'm going to take some, um, this is actually serpentine. It's one of the Daniel Smith Primatech colors. And I'm just going to add... Water lily kind of coming through there. You just want to be careful as you're going next to the lily because it will bleed together if you touch it on a wet, a wet area. I don't mind some of the colors bleeding a bit. This is actually a bit more vibrant than my original painting, which is fine. I like the vibrant color. I notice, like, depending on where I'm painting, like the lighting can affect how I apply the color. So painting out in bright sunlight, I might paint differently than painting with my studio lights that are a little bit more um, uh, specifically designed to the way I like to paint. I think I'm gonna, I like that little bit of I like the colors kind of merging in together, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to prevent that too much. I kind of like that. This paper has a pretty good sizing on it, so I don't have to pre-wet anything really. I'm gonna charge in some darker colors. I'm gonna go with this uh, hooker's green. I'm gonna add some add a little ultramarine to it to tone it down a little bit and darken it. And I can go through and just kind of add it to the edges, let it, let it soak in. I can add some into the shadow areas. Let the colors play. I think it's fun just to, just to let your colors play on the paper sometimes. I'm wondering if I would see just, probably wouldn't see... Maybe I'd see the edge of the lily pad over here. I'm going to put it in there, even though it's kind of like a cartoon lily pad. I feel like it needs that little extra. And I also want to put a little bit of brown. I like how there's so many different dividers on this palette to um, mix your colors in. You know, because a lot of times you just need a little touch of a color, but you don't want to um, contaminate like a bigger well. I like that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow and brown together. I'm just going to add some little little stems. You have all these like little these lily pads all have stems down to the bottom of the pond, so you got to put those in. I'm also going to put, mix some like water. I'm going to do some watercolor. I'm going to do the uh, cobalt teal, a little bit of ultramarine. And I'm just going to put in some very, very light, 
Actually, maybe even a little bit more water there. I don't want this to be the um, I don't want it to steal the show. I just want the hint of this being on the water. And my water is going to go over the um, the weeds. It's going to go over the, the stems that are in the water. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I've had some requests for some quicker and easier tutorials. And I think this would be really pretty on, say, like a greeting card. Something where, you know, you just want, you want to just put a little bit of, you want to do a quick little watercolor, something bright and uplifting and send to somebody. You don't want to spend an hour on it, you just want to do a little, a little something. I think this would be just the ticket for that. Okay, I think this, we're probably going to need to dry that a little bit before we do any other accents on the lily pad. I've got my heat tool here, so we'll just give it a quick little blast. If you were to go and paint on top of damp paper, what happens is you get that cauliflower look, which can be really pretty actually in some um, in some like loose watercolors, loose, loose florals. But if you're not expecting it or that's not what you want, then um, then it's a good idea to dry it. Like right there, you can kind of see where the paper dried a little bit and you got that little hard edge. That's kind of like a blossom starting to form. Blossoms don't like to form as much on um, cotton paper as they do on a cellulose paper because the sizing is more even and the absorption is more even of the paper. I also find if I flip my paper like this and I dry the back side, I get a flatter piece of paper. So it keeps it from warping, which is really nice if you're going to mail this out as a, as a greeting card or a postcard um, because it'll stay a little flatter for you. You won't have to press it under books or anything like that. All right, I think that's dry enough. You can see that it's um, that it has just slightly softened in color because the uh, the paper's dry now. Now I'm just going to do some accents here. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, a little bit of the teal, and I'm going to throw in just some kind of like um, gesture lines. And I can even paint a few darker petals if I feel like, like I've lost too much, like if I feel it's gotten too soft. Do the same with some pink on its own. Just throwing a few just little petal strokes. And I can do a little purple, ultramarine blue, and the pink. It's a little too much paint on my brush. And everyone's going to be different. You could paint this a bunch of different times, and each time you do it, you're probably going to make it a little bit different each time because your painting will need little accents in different spots, and your mood will change a little bit. Grab a little bit of green. And bring in some little lines from the edge. And I can even add a little bit more shadow under the flower if I want to. I would do ultramarine blue. Probably both of the greens, honestly. And that would be kind of like to carve flower out a little bit. I would go ahead and put the the color on, clean my brush, and then just kind of fade it out a little bit. So it's not super, um, it's not super bright. It's just kind of giving it a very soft separation, still keeping with that loose vibe. If you didn't like those white, if you had any white gaps, you didn't like the white gaps, you could also go in there with that color and get rid of them. But I don't I like that little bit of sparkle. I think that I think it adds a nice bit of um, uh, life and whimsy to it. And if you want to do any more with the water, you can do another bit of uh, of water. I would probably just stick that to like the foreground so you don't end up 
distracting into the background. So you kind of have, you know, your focal area and then you've got the background. I'm debating whether I want a little more yellow in this one because I feel like I could use a little bit more yellow. So maybe just kind of... There. So I didn't do any accenting to the, cent to the center on my other one, but this one I felt needed it. So there you have it, a quick and easy watercolor water lily. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to learn how to paint more loose florals, then check out my watercolor flower workshop. I'll have a link down below so you can easily find it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.